What is going on, everybody? Back with another one. Let's get right into it. Talking a little tech with you guys today. And I wanted to show you guys this little, this little guy over here, which right off the bat, it already, it already took the, the production, the quality of the videos, it already went up. So, I mean, this is a gimbal. For everyone who's pretty much watching this channel, I'm sure you guys know what a gimbal is, what it does. But this particular one is a little bit older. So this one is about two years old. This is the DJI Ronin SC. So this came out, like I said, two years ago. They already have like two different versions that came after it. And it's the new rave, it's the new hype and all that good stuff. And I'm not gonna talk about the specs. There's a million one YouTube videos out that can tell you, okay, these are the specs, these are the verses, this is the pros and the cons, all that good stuff. But why I got this for me and why it's been like, making such a difference and I'm glad I purchased the older model to the newer one is this. So I know I need to get a gimbal. I know I, I know I needed one. I would usually just borrow somebody's or rent it out. I could always get it if I needed it for a project, but many of my projects didn't really need a gimbal. A lot of it I was able to do handheld or I could just set up in tripod you or use a tripod. But and that actually goes to the point on how I purchase or upgrade my hardware. I kind of allow, like I already have this idea of like what lens I would like to have, what type of mics I would like, type of gimbals, tripods, bags, everything. But I have to allow the business to kind of dictate what I'm getting first. So it's very easy when it comes to hardware just to go out and just spend. It's fun, it's cool, you're getting all this new, getting the new lens and this focal length is a one point this, all that's fine, but it get expensive and then before you know it, you never use it and it's a bad investment, right? It does, it does nothing for you, right? All of my tech that I have, all of my gear that I have, it's been an asset. Once I bought it, I was already utilizing it, it had its purpose, it, I, made it, I made the money back off of it instantly. So that's how I, I use, that's how I use my business to dictate, okay, what do I need right now? And with the gimbal, I just didn't really need it, you know, then and there, like it just, it just wasn't necessary. It'll be for the B camera, you never know. But don't always harp on or don't get stressed out like when the new product comes out, okay, I gotta get, I gotta get, I gotta get it. Just like with the new iPhone is about to drop next week, everybody's gonna run to it, like, don't look at it like that, you know? You want the iPhone 13, but you just got the 12. You're fine, you know, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much gear, how much of the this, the that you get, it all depends on you, the person behind the camera, and what you're trying to tell, and what story you're trying to convey. And just having this, the fundamentals of just, okay, use what you got, you know, use what you have, and, Use your, those limitations that you have. Hey, hey, make it a strength in other areas. You know that's how I had to approach a lot of it when, before I'm talking about gimbals and A7s and all these different lenses and all of that. I was just like, I have to use what I have. You know, I have to just until things and I'm able in a position to grow and to get certain pieces of gear. I just have to use with use what I have and just blow it out the water. And that's exactly what I did. You know, whatever the limitations were, like I said, I used to shoot on an iPhone just, and then just take it into post, edit it, do what I had to do with it and put it out there and not say anything. And people were just like, you know, they're thinking it's, you know, these full frame cinema cameras and things like that. But I just knew coming into it, I couldn't harp on what I didn't have. I have to focus on what I do have, and what I'm capable of and go from there. So hope this helps. If anyone of you are out there thinking about getting a gimbal, definitely get a gimbal. If you're using any sort of camera, video camera, videography, any space like that, you're gonna need a gimbal. You're gonna get projects that will call for a gimbal. So I would suggest go ahead and make the investment, but make the investment based on, okay, what do I need? You know, you don't need, you don't always need the highest top tier, you know, production line gimbal. You know, sometimes, hey, you just may need, because another thing before I go, there's a bit of a learning curve with these gimbals too. It's not just, you just pick it up and then, you know, boom, you know, you're, it, it literally doesn't work like that at all. 
And I realized that early on too, when I first started to use them, like, okay, there's a bit of a, a learning curve right here. So even if let's say you were to get the top tier gimbal and you don't learn the mechanics of how gimbals work and how they move and just understand how is it making its move and understanding just your fundamentals and the basics your footage is going to look like trash as if you were holding it in your hand trust me okay so maybe it is better if hey right now my budget my projects okay maybe it makes more sense for me to get maybe the sec you know the the generation before or previous generation gimbal let me utilize it work it get good at it get great at it and then before you know it, okay, when it's time, I'll upgrade. Because really all the gimbals are doing the same thing. Most gimbals that we're looking at, it's gonna be a three axes gimbal. It's, they all will have the same mechanics. You know, the difference is, okay, this one can handle a higher payload or the software behind it. Um, you can integrate it more with your cameras and, fo and focus, you know, focal lengths and get integrate with the lens. And so, yes, there's definitely a ton of benefits to some of the newer ones, absolutely. But you're not out of the game if you have to go ahead and get an older model. And look at like that for anything that you're utilizing. You know, even if you have an older camera, but hey, if you have an older camera, but there's a ton of new lenses that came out, and really, the secret is in the glass anyway. The secret is in the lens. If you have a semi-old body, okay, yes. If we were to zoom in real, real tight, we could see, okay, it gets a little pixelated here, but what are you shooting for? Are you shooting for, you know, social media? Is it more YouTube? Are you trying to get full length? Are you trying to eventually get on um, DSPs like your Netflixes and Hulus? Okay, yes, there, for example, Netflix has a certain criteria in terms of the codecs that they want. All right, so maybe your camera won't work, but if the majority of your stuff that you are shooting for is gonna wind up on YouTube and social media platforms, well, most people aren't even seeing, you know, the content in 4K anyway. They're not even seeing it in 2K. Most of your viewers, most everybody basically, if they're watching from their phone, they don't have a 4K display. They're watching it, it's gonna be okay, maybe a little bit higher than HD, it could be okay at 1440, but okay. So it just kind of evens the playing field a little bit in that regard also. Hey, if you got an older body yeah, mate, and you can't get the new whatever you want, okay, maybe you can upgrade the lens. Maybe you can invest the money in more of the software, clean it up a little bit in post. There's just a multitude of different ways to look at it and there's just always options. So don't ever think that, okay, because you don't have this, that you cannot pursue what you want to do and pursue your dream and continue to grow. You can. All right. Let me get out of here before I start rambling. Another video is on the way as always. Appreciate you guys watching. Until the next one.